Good afternoon. So if we speak about molecular markers of uh, gliomas, we should first and foremost say that in terms of brain tumors, for the first time, as a matter of fact, the deep diagnosis, morphological diagnosis of brain tumors, we uh, incorporated molecular markers. What are gliomas? Gliomas, by definition, these are neuroglia tumors. That means tumor of the cells which are surrounding and adjacent to neurons. And coming out of the morphological uh, ideas, these tumors were subdivided into astrocytomas. These are cells originating from predecessors of astrocytes and oligodendrogliomas. Here we speak about tumors which are related to oligodendrocytes. And um, as a matter of fact, all these things are quite more complicated because astrocytes and oligodendrocytes have single predecessors, the so-called stem cells. That is why the definition is conditional, so to say, and a bit obscure. And the diagnosis of these particular tumors, as a matter of fact, was quite difficult for the morphologists and very high risk of subjectivity. And apart from that, there was quite a lot of oligodendroglia astrocytomas. So the uh, tumors are, as morphologists thought, of combined nature. At the moment, everything is all right. Um, we uh, have mandatory tests for the uh, 1P11Q uh, deletion. And on all oligodendrogliomas, there is deletion of this sort. Apart from that, there is a uh, test for IDH mutation. These are genes which are related to metabolism, cell metabolism. And subsequently, we consider that in oligodendroglioma, there is a mandatory IDH mutant in the deletion of 1P11Q. Uh, and for astrocytomas, we have absence of this co-deletion. IDH status can be different. And at the same time, we must understand that for glioblastomas and for more benign types of tumors, there are two types of uh, no uh, malformations, IDH and without IDH mutation. And IDH mutation as such correlates with a much more favorable prognosis. In this particular situation, you can see a prognosis for glioblastoma and without mutation, and this is prognosis for glioblastoma with mutation. The same situation is typical for a typical of other uh, types of tumors. So, uh, as a matter of fact, there is a relatively recent technology of uh, full genome sequencing. And uh, I def uh, it allows us to identify mutations in IDH uh, gene in uh, gliomas. They code enzymes which are called uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase. In the norm, they are part of metabolic uh, process, and they catalyze uh, turning isocitrate into 2-oxaglutarate. This is no morphic mutation, and the main portion of enzyme is reduced. The mutant enzyme are not capable of this reaction. But there is a new metabolite that is formed, which is 2-hydroxyglutarate. This metabolite impacts methylation of genome, first and foremost. And uh, as a result of hypermethylation, the, the biology of the cell is modified, which is very important. And there is chromosome instability, which occurs. Uh, GMT gene is methylated, which is related to the effect of temozolomide. And there, are, there is systemic impairment of the uh, tumor biology. On the whole, mutation in IDH genes uh, can be identified very easily. These are point mutations. 
and this test is not problematic, it's not difficult at all. This is a marker of favorable prognosis because these tumors, are, they are much more favorable uh, as such. And the temazolamide uh, provides a much better reaction to these tumors. And uh, mm, there are antibodies that, uh, mm, that uh, were experimented with, but I like uh, simple uh, a simple genetic methods because we need genetics uh, for uh, co deletion of uh, 1P19Q. So surrogate markers, which are indirect, I suppose this is they are not uh, good enough. If we speak about glioblastomas, then there are two types of or two groups of glioblastomas. The ones that uh, developed because of some benign astrocytomas uh, grew into something more aggressive. And for such glioblastomas, we usually have a typical feature because they contain IDH mutation. Most frequently, glioblastomas develop de novo, so they don't have identified predecessor. Subsequently, these glioblastomas are a bit older, or they occur in more advanced age groups of patients, and they don't have IDH mutation, or IDH is wild type. Mutations, as a matter of fact, have a much better prognosis by itself, and if therapy is applied. So at the moment, we have several inhibitors developed uh, of the uh, IDH mutation. They are used for the treatment of acute uh, myeloma. Uh, Blast glucoses and for but for glioblastomas, such therapy is in vain. There are certain observations, uh, but singular, and like this clinical case, for example, she was treated for a relapse of glioblastoma. It was removed by laser, and just to prevent further relapses, she started taking IV, uh, a drug which is usually applied for the mutant uh, isocitrated dihydrokinases. And uh, she was on it for four uh, years. And um, she has no adverse events, but on the whole, a great number of uh, biological uh, tests and studies show that IDH1, 2 mutations uh, is important to form the tumor, but to support its viability, they are not mandatory, they are not needed. So as a matter of fact, uh, applying uh, drugs in, uh, against these particular enzymes is not of clinical relevance, at least for glioblastoma patients. But they cause chromosome, uh, chromosome instability. This is one of the observations that was published um, in the beginning of 2021. What did the authors do? They took uh, patients with unusually favorable prognosis and uh, looked into their molecular portfolios or portraits and uh, tried to understand why such tumors uh, can be treated so successfully. If you look at the um, long survivors on the uh, if you have a pecan, maybe such drugs really should be looked at uh, as a drug as drugs of choice. Um, when we have such mutations. But these are just uh, separate or singular observations, and we should not be taking them for granted. And uh, sometimes in brain tumors, very rarely, but we have some um, uh, patients for target, uh, targeted therapy. One of the target um, drugs which was uh, approved for uh, astrocytomas are um, mTOR, um, 
uh, enzyme inhibitors. For example, there is tuberosic sclerosis, which is related to the uh, mutations in TSC. And as a matter of fact, the uh, mTOR kinase is activated. Sometimes these are sporadic uh, events. These are uh, not just hereditary tumors. Sometimes it is just practically inactivated and mTOR activation happens. Uh, there are certain uh, options for pharmacotreatment, for example, Everolimus, which demonstrated its efficacy in patients where astrocytomas uh, um, occurred. Uh, and uh, at least in the United States, it was approved for such rare tumors. Uh, then uh, BRAF gene mutations, uh, more typical for melanoma, sometimes uh, also lung cancer and uh, uh, bowel cancer uh, is associated with this mutation. And and also, it can be uh, it can occur in our patients. At least two inhibitors can be applied here. There's a vemurafenib and a dabrafenib. If we speak about brain tumors, then we can actually say that such mutations they uh, actually uh, mean that uh, we have certain indications for treatment. Uh, we have long-term uh, observations. Uh, especially in pediatric patients, high-grade gliomas in BRA, with BRAF mutation. And uh, there were several attempts to um, apply vemurafenib and uh, combination uh, uh, with dabrafenib, and uh, that was quite a success story. In fact, it was just uh, recommended for the pediatric patients with uh, um, uh, BRAF mutation. Sometimes uh, brain tumors is, are also associated with hypermutant uh, phenotype when there are hundreds of times more mutations than uh, in a tumor than the usual tumor. For example, sometimes in such carcinomas, we can observe microsatellite instability, which is also important uh, where uh, at the background with tamazolamide, we have activation activation of genes um, of the DNA uncoupled uh, uh, basements, then uh, microsatellite instability occurs, which is an agnostic marker of immune therapy. And we should say that it's not only microsatellite instability, which is the result of a hypermutant phenotype. In some brain tumors, we, there can occur uh, in DNA polymerase gene uh, just mutation, which also uh, results in the accumulation of mutations. And uh, uh, also, it's an indication for such therapy as well. There are several reports uh, that show that uh, there is a met uh, fusion gene, um, met fusion gene uh, presence. There are new inhibitors uh, th that occur at the moment, and uh, in some cases, such treatment can be really effective, MGMT. As a matter of fact, the most unnecessary marker to analyze brain tumor, especially uh, when we speak about gliomas, this is a gene which uh, encodes GMT. And it provides a mechanism of action of this drug is related to the fact that DNA base is methylated. So if uh, the activity of this enzyme is high, then uh, the uh, treatment will be in vain. And if the activity is low, then tamazolamide can really be active uh, in the tumor. As a matter of fact, as of today, the majority of researchers use indirect test. If the MGMT promoter is methylated, then the production of this enzyme is low, and then we expect tamazolamide to be certain um, uh, to be uh, effective. I'm not a supporter of this. I suppose uh, we have a uh, direct method in our hands. It's just uh, RNA expression. It's direct method, and uh, it's much more informative. That's why we try to analyze the activity of MGMT uh, directly at the level of RNA. 
we should understand that all the gliomas uh, with IDH mutation, they are associated with uh, methylation of uh, GMT, and they should not be tested. We should uh, do this test only for the tumors where we can see normal sequence of IDH enzyme. So when it comes to MGMT testing, I suppose that there are there is certain uh, and very clear algorithm. Um, temozolomide is ineffective in the majority of patients with a high MGMT expression. It is so ineffective that for such patients, it is reasonable to try to refer them to clinical trials with the application of some other types of treatment apart from temozolomide and vice versa. If uh, the production of this enzyme is at a low level, so the tumor is uh, potentially sensitive to temozolomide, then intensification of temozolomide um, can be used. For example, here, where patients with low MGMT expression were sensitive to temozolomide, um, they were on combination with lomostin. And uh, as a matter of fact, they gained uh, survival, this uh, clinically significant uh, survival. Uh, when we speak about 1P19Q uh, co-deletion, there are many genes which are located here. Um, some of them uh, impact the pathogenesis of, uh, the, uh, of gliomas, but I suppose in terms of co-deletion, it has only prognostic value. And further on, these particular tumors, they are treated according to their diagnosis. Um, there, has been ma there have been many attempts to use these markers in order to select treatment. For instance, uh, to administer temozolomide uh, or not, here you can see different regimens and different schemes of treatment. If MGMT uh, promoter is unmethylated, the production of enzyme is high, then the tomazolamide is um, ineffective, and we can use uh, radiotherapy alone. If the promoter, uh, uh, if the expression is low, then uh, we can use combination of uh, tomazolamide and uh, radiotherapy. Such algorithms uh, are used in a number of settings, and they are very well developed. A separate uh, type of gliomas are gliomas of mid midline or midline gliomas. For them, usually we have uh, glioma in one of the uh, proteins uh, encoding uh, uh, gisto, gisto. The mutation is in the same amino acid. Uh, it's uh, uh, K, RAS, and N, RAS. So the genes are different, but the numbers of positions with replacements are more or less the same. Uh, so this test, as a matter of fact, is diagnostic, of diagnostic value. When we uh, detect such mutation, then the diagnosis of um, midline glioma uh, and uh, we can diagnose it with, uh, with no doubt and uh, definitely treat it according to the diagnosis. Another gene which also can be applied in diagnostics is transcription regulator. What's most important here is uh, that it is uh, most frequently mutated when IDH is uh, mutated, a mutant and there is a loss of expression of this gene. The mutation of ATRX, as it is, uh, they are accompanied with a change in mutation, a uh, great number of immune histochemical laboratories, they practice analysis of this uh, ATRX status to produce the glial uh, so it's IDH uh, status and um, the equivalent by 
So these events, uh, they usually come in concordance with one another. And at the moment, we can say that not all the laboratories use additional diagnostics of ATRX uh, gene or the production of its protein. As a matter of fact, we usually looked at the glial uh, tumors uh, as a separate uh, system from the brain itself. But the uh, t tumor cells, they contain glutamate receptors. Subsequently, they can respond to uh, signals from neurons. Electrophysiological exacerbation uh, is typical not only of the neurons, but the glial cells, which contain glutamate receptors. So this is why uh, we have this event that inhibitors of glutamate receptors, uh, so anti-epileptical um, uh, anti -epileptic drugs can be uh, a treatment to the brain tumors as well. And the fact that the uh, tumors can conduct electrophysiological impulses and they're as actively as the neurons, this is quite a new information. More to that. Similar observations uh, come from the carcinomas of the breast. It turns out that the brain carcinoma can also express uh, glutamate receptors, so they can be physiologically, electrophysiologically active. And expression of these glutamate receptors uh, can um, result in much higher risk of uh, metastasizing um, of the breast tumor into the brain. So, generally speaking, this innervation of the tumor is uh, completely new, and it can impact the uh, growth potential. It can provoke the uh, tumor growth, and it can curb it as well. And there are NK suppressor genes, for example, um, P53, which, mute, which is very frequently mutant in the brain, but its activation can um, uh, innervate the, malf the malformations uh, provoking its growth. Here you can have certain, uh, certain um, tour to the adjacent areas of oncology. The basis is IDH analysis, as well as the status on the 1P19Q um, deletion. I suppose that this particular scheme can be also modified and added. That MGMT analysis is one of the most standard, standardized and one of the most um, popular tests in the tumor, um, in the tumor treatment. Thank you.